Hello people, this is self Tuts and in this video series, we will learn about AWS Lambda. This is a, a fresh course in which you will understand how AWS Lambda works and what is the need of using AWS Lambda. We will also understand the architecture of AWS Lambda and we will also try to interact with AWS Lambda using Node.js runtime. Talking about AWS Lambda, then Amazon Web Services provide more than 30 web services to us and AWS Lambda is one of them. So AWS Lambda follows function as a service architecture. Basically these architectures are serverless in nature which means a single function act as a service and there is nothing and there is no need for servers. So in function as a service architecture importance is given to a single function as that and that single function has a responsibility to perform some action. AWS Lambda is a compute service from AWS. So basically there are so many services being provided by AWS and those services are divided into multiple sections. If I go through the AWS website and I'll try to log in it, log in into my console and the console is getting loaded. So now inside this services tab, if I see different services then they are divided into multiple sections like compute developer tool storage inside the compute section there is a lambda service so this compute services are generally meant for doing some calculation or do some uh, doing some logical calculation so basically aws lambda comes under the compute service section suppose this black box is a aws cloud or a place where amazon web services are hosted so inside that AWS cloud, there is a Lambda function. For now, treat this Lambda function as a simple function that you write in day-to-day in day -day code. So this is, uh, this is just like a simple function. And we are trying to send some data to this simple function or this Lambda 1 function. So basically this data can be sent through, uh, through different ways. In this case, suppose we are sending this data by invoking the Lambda function through a command line tool. So this data is being sent to lambda1 function and this lambda1 function has a responsibility to write that data into our DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a database which is being provided by AWS. So this lambda1 function has the responsibility to take data from the event and to write that data into our DynamoDB. So this lambda function is there in the cloud and every time it is getting invoked with a data, it writes that to the DynamoDB. So we are only hosting a single function and not the whole application. So this lambda one function is a single function and it acts on the action which is being written inside this lambda one function. Now suppose there is a scenario that we are having a web app and uh, which uploads images. So user can upload an image of 5 MB, 10 MB. So if you want to show that 5 MB images everywhere in our mobile devices or in our tab, then that can cause a heavy loss to our bandwidth. So user has the uh, ability to upload a 5 MB size of image. But what we do that every time an image comes to our S3 bucket, then an event is fired to this Lambda 2 function. And this Lambda 2 function has a responsibility to take that 5 MB image and reduce the size of it. So every time a new image come uh, to Amazon S3 bucket, then it gets that image from here and this Lambda 2 function reduces the size of that image. So this is a single function which has the responsibility to reduce the size of an image. So the image can be uh, that the image can come from anywhere like we can uh, send the image from command line itself. In this case, we are using S3 bucket. Another scenario is that there is an API gateway which exposes one API to send two numbers. So let's say that two numbers are A and B and we need to find the random number between those two numbers. So what we'll do, we'll write a lambda 3 function which has the responsibility to accept two numbers and return a random number between them. So this API gateway will expose a rest endpoint which can accept two numbers in the body and that when this API gateway is invoked or that resource is getting invoked, then in turn this API gateway invokes the lambda 3 function and those two number A and B are sent to lambda 3. So what lambda 3 do? It takes the two number and returns the 
random number in between them. So from these three examples, you must have understood that by writing a single function and giving some responsibility to it, we can do uh, awesome things in AWS Lambda. The most important point is you don't have to worry about the infrastructure of these services means where these are running, how many memory, uh, how much memory is there, how, how much CPU is getting utilized. You don't have to worry about that. Everything is taken care by the AWS people. You only have to focus on the code what you write means you have to focus only on your code and not on the infrastructure. Then AWS Lambda does the scaling part by itself means there is an auto scaling. Suppose the number of requests increases then AWS Lambda will handle that means suppose uh, there is a single request then there is a single instance of Lambda 1 function. So what will happen if the number of in, uh, request increases the, uh, then the instances of, the, of this Lambda 1 function will increase. So everything will be done by AWS itself and you don't have to do anything for that. So if the number of requests increases the handling of those increase, uh, those requests will be done by AWS and if the number of uh, requests decreases then the handling of that uh, uh, reduce in the request will be handled by AWS itself. The most important point I think uh, for AWS Lambda to rise is pay for use means you have to pay for what you are using. Suppose your Lambda 1 function is there and you have written it 5 months before and in this 5 months uh, there, there is not a single request coming to this Lambda 1 function. So you will not be charged any single penny for that means AWS charges for the Lambda function when it runs means if it runs for 1 hour in, in 1 year then it will charge only for one hour like previously when we buy uh, Apache servers then we have to pay for the whole year irrespective of that our website is getting used or not but here uh, the amount of money that we have to pay depends upon the amount of time that function is getting used so this is a very uh, good point uh, for rise of AWS Lambda. For current AWS Lambda architecture, Node.js, Java, C Sharp and Python is uh, getting used. So you can write your code in Node either in Node.js or in Java or in C Sharp or in Python. So uh, these are the uh, famous languages nowadays and you can write your code in any of these uh, for any of these languages and you can deploy them to AWS services and you can run your Lambda function. So in this course will be working with node.js and we'll do all our coding in node.js so i think this is all clear about aws lambda introduction if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and if you like this video then please give a